Hello YouTubers, Rugmonkey Jr. here, and in today's video I got a quick OBS studio recording tutorial for all of you. I made one of these a while ago, but I have learned a lot about OBS since then, so I thought I would make a refresh. Now this setup guide will focus on a single PC recording setup and not talk about streaming. First and foremost, you will need to download and install OBS Studio, link in the description down below. Okay, now that you have downloaded OBS Studio, the first thing I will get you to do is go to the profile tab on the top of the program, select new and rename, and name it to whatever you like. For example, I named mine game recording 1080p 60fps. More on this later. Let's move on to the settings. We will forego the first two tabs of this window and go right to the third tab or output. Next to output mode there is a drop down bar, select advanced, you will then have access to more tabs. Go to the recording tab. For type, leave it to standard. For recording path, ideally you want to be recording to a different hard drive or SSD than your main C drive, from which your OS, games, and many other apps run. This will reduce the amount of strain on that drive, which will be particularly high if you have a mechanical hard drive, as these aren't the best at reading and writing large amounts of information all at once. Next we get to an important part, recording format. By default, it will be set to FLV. Now this format can be just fine, however, it does not support multiple audio lines, which you will want to have when editing videos. So this leaves us with the following choices, which all support multiple audio lines. The widely compatible MP4 format, the lesser compatible MOV format, and the MKV format, which isn't very compatible at all with most, if not all, editing software. For the longest time I was using MP4 for the multiple audio lines, which is great, however this format is easily corruptible in the event of OBS crashing, a power outage, or a system crash, which happened to me more often than I would like to admit. This will make the recording completely unusable. Lately I have been using the MKV format, which doesn't have this issue, but isn't compatible with most editing software. However, OBS has a file format converter, which you can use to convert MKV into MP4. Sure, it might be one extra step, but it can save you from those unexpected events which would cause you to lose a whole recording session if you were using MP4. To convert the MKV file, all you need to do is go to File in the main OBS window, then select Remux Recordings. Select the video, then hit Remux and voila, you have an MP4 file. Now back to the recording settings. Right below Recording Format you have Audio Track, with six numbers that have checkboxes next to them. For the purposes of this video and simplicity, we will check box 1 and 2, which will give you access to two audio tracks. Next we have Encoder. You will usually have two options here, either X264 or NVENC H.264 if you own an NVIDIA graphics card, or AMD VCE for an AMD graphics card. For recording, I would suggest using the graphics card built-in hardware encoder, as the quality of these at high bit rates is better than X264. Rescale output should stay unchecked, unless you plan on downscaling your recording from your display resolution. Next we go down to Rate Control. Here I would go with either CBR or VBR, which stand for Constant Bitrate and Variable Bitrate respectively. I personally use CBR, which ensures that the whole recording is constantly recorded with the same bitrate, no matter how much action is happening on screen. VBR is of course variable, which means that you'll have smaller file sizes because the bitrate will vary depending on how much is happening on screen. However, this can cause artifacting in certain cases. So I would suggest CBR if you have the room on your HDD. I use a bitrate of 50,000 bits per second for recording at 1080p 60fps. Remember that when rendering out a video, post editing, you can reduce this bitrate according to YouTube's bitrate guidelines, and that it is always easier to reduce quality or compress a video than add quality to it later. You can always tinker with the bitrate depending on how much storage you have on the drive you will be recording on. For the rest of the settings in this tab, I leave them on default. Next, we go to the audio tab. Here I would change the audio bitrate for track 1 and 2 to 320 kilobits per second, seeing as you aren't as limited as you would be if you were streaming. Putting this to the highest possible bitrate will give you the best audio quality with a negligible difference in file size. Now onto the audio tab in the bar on the left of this window. Here you only need to change two different things, desktop audio device and mic slash auxiliary audio device. 
Use whatever you want your sound to come through for desktop audio device, for example, Logitech G930s for me. And for the mic slash auxiliary audio device, whatever your microphone is. For me, it would be microphone Yeti stereo microphone. Now to the video tab. Make sure the base canvas resolution and the output scaled resolution are set to 1920 by 1080. For the downscale filter, it really doesn't matter, as you aren't downscaling, you are keeping the same resolution as the base canvas. For common FPS values, I record in 60 frames per second. In the hotkeys section, you can set the start recording and stop recording to whatever you like. I would suggest something like F8 and F9 or any keys you wouldn't use in a video game. Now hit apply and OK. Before we continue, Hit the Profile tab at the top and select Export. This allows you to back up the settings profile that we just made so you can import it in case you need to reinstall OBS, format your PC, or anything of the sorts without having to redo the entire settings that we just did. Now bear with me, the tutorial is almost done. Only a few more things to do. At the bottom left you should see a Scenes section as well as a Source section. You can rename the base scene to whatever you wish, such as Game Recording. While having that scene highlighted, select the plus icon on the Sources section, then select Game Capture. Name it whatever you like, and leave everything in the properties as is. Now this is very important. Right click on the Game Capture source, mouse over Transform, and hit Fit to Screen. If you don't do this, you will only have a black screen in your recording, because for some unknown reason, it doesn't fit the Game Capture source to screen by default. This is one of if not the most important part, which a lot of other tutorials skip over. Now for the last part, you should see a mixer section for your two audio tracks. Click on the gear icon next to either track, then select advanced audio properties. By default, the six tracks for both audio devices will be selected. You want each audio device to only have one audio track selected and both be different from each other. In this case, you would only have the track 1 box checked for desktop audio and only have the track 2 box checked for mic slash augs. Before I forget, when you open your recorded file, you will only be able to hear a single audio track, as media readers can only play back a single audio track. Don't worry, upon opening the video file in a video editor such as Sony Vegas Pro or Adobe Premiere, you will be able to see the two different audio tracks and edit them accordingly. And that's it, you're ready to start recording your awesome gaming moments. I would suggest running a few test recordings to make sure that everything is working as intended. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know in the comments section down below. And don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video or if you found it helpful. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as always, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good one.